Hello guys, um, welcome to another video on uh, rotational motion. In this video, we introduce the concept of uh, rigid body rotation. So we're going to, to look at the influence of uh, the effect of, uh, of mass on objects that are, that are rotating. So yeah, so basically throughout uh, your studies so far, You've been most questions have been neglecting the mass of uh, objects that are rotating and how they influence the behavior of a uh, of a rotating object. Now, in this case, we want to introduce that. We want to see what well, they also have initia. Then now, we want to just see how we can treat uh, uh, treat those concepts. Now, before we uh, we really um, pass a lot of time uh, to start this, I'd like to just uh, remind you guys um, of one term. Let's say talk. So I hope you've you've seen this term before. But if you haven't, well, what is talk? You see, talk is defined as uh, the turning effect of an object, or you can also look at it as the product of the force and the perpendicular distance from where the force is being being applied. So this is basically just a moment. Uh, yeah, that's why we're saying it's a turning effect. So the, the key thing is the force and the distance have to be perpendicular. Now, well, uh, of course, the units here, of course, play out automatically become the, the Newton meter. Now, how does this help us with rigid body rotation? Well, think about something that is, that is rotating. So if an object is rotating uh, around the circular path, at every point, the tangential force Ft, it will be acting perpendicular to, to the radius of, of rotation. Now, let's look at, um, look at the uh, Newton's second law. So if you apply Newton's second law to an object that is uh, undergoing rotational motion, then we're saying this is equals to mat. Now multiply both sides by the radius. You end up with Ft, times the radius, and then the right-hand side, you have m r a t. Well, when you look at the left-hand side, you observe that you have a, a, a part, a term which you obtain when you multiply a force, f t, times a perpendicular distance to that force, r a. In other words, this term actually gives us the torque for this uh, object in rotation, which is rotating. So that is FTR. So this part gives us torque. Now, with this, it's also true to say that then the torque is equal to MRAT. Okay. Now let's look at um, this equation. Let's say this is our equation one, and this is our equation two, and this is our equation three. Now let's look at equation three a little bit more. Now you recall from our dis discussions on on circular motion, that AT was equal to R alpha. Now, because of this, because of our equation four, when we substitute this where we have A, A, T there, then our equation three becomes T, uh, which is a uh, torque, tau, is equals to M, R, where we have AT, this now becomes A alpha. Now, when we simplify this, this now becomes m r squared alpha. Now, here, when we combine equation four and equation five, so when you get equation, not really equation four, when you combine equation, uh, equation two and equation five, we now notice that what we have is ft r is equal to m r squared alpha. Okay, now at this point, this term also we've seen that this part, this is just torque. And then when we look at uh, this term here, uh, the MR squared, this term in most, this is what we look, what we, we come to consider as the moment of inertia of an object that is rotating. So this is the, um, the equation that relates the torque to um, 
the angular acceleration of an object. Now, let's label this as six and this as seven. Okay, now for the most part, we're going to be using, uh, depending on what we want to find, we're going to be using, um, this, this, um, this is basically the same equation. Can we use equation six or equation seven, uh, depending on what we, what we want to find. Now, I want you guys to, to look at equation seven and try to see what it means. You see, for an object of a particular mass, it is going to undergo this acceleration under the influence of this turning effect. This kind of relates to Newton's second law in linear motion, F is equals to MA. Now, I want you guys to just observe this and try to see uh, the similarities here. Now, once you, you feel you're, you're comfortable with it, now try, try to look at this question that, come, that is coming next. Okay, so I picked up this question in one of the, the exam past papers. It's kind of like, um, it's kind of a simple question really, but it, I think I've already been given away the, the answer to this question. So try, just try to look at it and see if you can answer it. So um, yeah, so basically uh, the two equations are very, very similar. Uh, the one for Newton's second law in linear motion and to the expression for torque relating to the moment of inertia in the angular acceleration. So basically what you should, what you should look at is in that equation, uh, torque kind of directly relates to, uh, to the force. And then the moment of inertia I directly relates to, uh, to the mass, which is the inertia tendency to resist change in, in motion. And then the angular acceleration, of, of course, this relates to the tangential acceler acceleration, okay. Now, with this out of the way, the only other thing I'd like you guys to, to just observe is, um, well, this is basically just how, how we incorporate uh, the, the effect of something that is rotating. But uh, everything else that we've looked at so far will hold. Now, think about a situation where you have uh, something that is rotating like this, and then it is, and then maybe you have an object that is hooked to, uh, to this particular object, uh, to this rotating wheel. And then this has uh, some mass M. So what you have to do here is, initially would know what is happening here, the mass of this, and then just look at the tension here um, as if nothing is, there's no influence from there. But then what we are saying here is, we can't ignore the mass of this rotating wheel. We have to take that into consideration. So if you are going to work out the forces here, as usual, you close it up here. So we're saying there's tension there and there's the weight going down mg. So what we're going to do is, we're going to take, if this object is going down, we're going to take the mass mg minus the tension, and then this is equal to ma. So this is our equation one. And then now the next part that we have to do is to look at, well, what about this rotating object? What is its influence? So if the radius of the rotating object is R, then what we have to look at is, uh, well, from the equations that we had, uh, we have force times uh, the radius is equal to, and then here we had uh, moment of inertia times alpha. So since this force is at a tangent to the axis of rotation, so what it means is this force FT is actually the one which comes down as uh, the tension in the earlier equation. So we can then write this equation as T is equal to moment of inertia times alpha divided by the radius. Then you can get this equation and substitute it where we have tension in the first equation. So then it becomes mg minus I, alpha over R, which is equals to MA. Now, this is just one way we can apply the moment, or we can apply the, the effect of something rotating to, um, to concepts that we've already looked at. Uh, we can, just as we've seen here, we can also apply it to something that is uh, uh, moving something like this, a system like this. We can easily apply it to, to, to this as well. So the only thing that, that we keep doing here is to include the, if the influence of this. 
So if what you have is tension one and what we have is tension two, the argument here is that the tension one is not the same as the tension two. Some force has to be done to overcome the, the resistance due to, due to the pulley. So to get what goes there, you have to kind of subtract from T1, subtract T2. Whatever is happening here, this is what actually influences, um, this is what comes this side as our tangential force. This is what comes as our, uh, our tangential force Ft, implying that in working out the influence of the, of the pulley here, you're going to have F, yeah, Ft times R equal to moment of inertia times alpha. So from here, you can easily find, if, depending on what you're, what you're trying to find, of course, you can easily use these relations. So if you look, if this system is going down again, you can close this system here, and then you're going to have mg going down minus uh, t1, and then this gives you your ma. And then from the other equation, what you have is just t2 is equal to, if that is, let's say that is m2, that is, it, so this is just equal to m2, multiplying uh, the acceleration e. Okay, so basically, this is how you how you work out uh, uh, these questions. So depending on depending on what what you have really, uh, the, the the effect will always be will, will always to always vary. Okay, so this is this is eighty. So the acceleration here is basically the same that 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 goes to uh, to the pulley. So depending on what system you're dealing with, uh, the moment of initial will, will, will always be different. That's that's just a key thing that you have to keep in mind. Like for example, if you are dealing with a with a solid sphere, so for a solid sphere, the moment of initial i is just two over five. Um, m r squared. So depending, and then if you, if you have a disk, for a disk you're looking at a one over two m r squared. So depending on the shape of the object that is rotating, i will be different. So um, yeah, I think we can end here. So for your practice, uh, you can just try out uh, uh, these two questions and see if you can just try to, to use the concepts that we've, we've described here and see if you can, uh, can get the correct answers. So we'll work out a lot of examples to just help you out. In the next video, we're going to work out question one. And then after that, we'll go to, um, to question two. All right, so hope this video was helpful. It was just uh, a quick uh, guide through what is expected of you to work out these questions. All right, see you in the next video for question one.